welcome to another episode of Sips and Trips with me and, of course, Tania. So we're just waiting for Tania to hop on. And I think tonight is going to be a really fun um, episode. We're going to be talking about current events and playing a little game with each other. So thank you for tuning in. Um, of course, you know, we're always sipping something. So tonight, I am sipping Crystal Light. So when Tania gets on, she can let us know what she'll be sipping on tonight. Hey, girl. Just going to go ahead and add Tania in real quick. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties. She should be joining us any second now. Hey, okay, friend. Hey. Oh, I love your glasses. glasses. Thank you. I love you. We yours. both put the same top. Those are cute. Are those prescription? Always prescription. Every pair that you see me with is prescription. Oh, I, I love them. Thank Where you. Where do you get them from? The usual. Wear life. That's where I get all my friends from. Can you drop that in the comments? Because mm -hmm. I know I'm not the only person that be wondering about your sunglasses. Those are everything. Thank you. Are, are yours prescription? No. Yeah. They're actually so bad. I like them. Yeah, I love them. Thank you. Hey, Miss Brenda. Hey, Brenda. For those of you that don't know, Brenda is like my second mom. She kind of sometimes my first, but she really took me in like when I was a little hard headed. Was I a teenager? No, I was fresh out of college working at um, Kroger's. And so, yeah, I love when she's able to pop in. Hey, Angie. Th thank you all for joining us. And I'm pretty sure that um, Jennifer has already introduced Sips and Trips. But, you know, I like to go back over it as well because I see that we have a lot of new people joining us. But um, a couple of times a month, we definitely get on here and we discuss all things travel. And so... Jennifer and I are both pretty well traveled, but neither one of us really came from families to where we had a lot of international travel experience. And so we've kind of had to learn a lot of things on our own. And I know both of us kind of started traveling before we had things like Instagram, before we had things like Facebook. And so we have Sips and Trips where we drink our favorite beverages and talk all things travel. So this is your first Sips and Trips. Definitely get your girls on, grab your beverage and join us and remember you can always request to join our live if you have something to talk about so feel free to hit that button and we are here for it so what is what's your sister girl so i mean liqueurs whether it's bailey's amarulo i can even drink kalua like i love cream liqueurs and i especially love african cream liqueurs this one is like Amarulo, but it's called Serengeti. And I picked it up because, to be honest, the Serengeti was one of my absolute favorite trips of all time. Miss Angelina, who's actually in the comments, is who I allowed, who allowed me to drag her to Africa with me. And, we, and it was her idea for us to add on a um, safari through the Serengeti for our trip. So Amarulo. That is amazing. Drinking it. And it's a sipper, so... That's what I'm drinking. I heard you say you were drinking Crystal Light. Yes, girl, because we on mocktails, and I'm trying to unbig my stomach. So we sh sugar-free is the way to be over here. <laughs> Joe this or that said, I'm on a rum punch vibe, and thus I will not be requesting to get on live. I actually think if you're on a rum punch vibe that you should request to get on live, but we'll see how you feel. So First of all, she everyone. is hilarious, so she need to join the live see? because... She is so funny. So Joe, this and that, we'll be looking. We hope that something touches your spirit and that your wrong punch kind of gives you a little bit of enthusiasm to join our live. We would absolutely love it. And so are y'all ready for tonight's Sip and Trips episode? Well, I know I'm ready because I got some things to say. <laughs> okay. What you want to say, girl? Well, you know, we said we was going to talk about some current events. And I was telling you the other night about this story that I heard about the lady leaving the bad review at the hotel. Tell us about that for those that don't know. Okay, so this woman and her daughter, they're staying at this hotel in Thailand. 
and, and I guess they had a bad time. Now, instead of them waiting to see, I mean, waiting until they left the hotel, they left the review while they were staying there. So basically, in the middle of the night, the cops come <laughs> and arrest her and her daughter for leaving the bad <laughs> review. So I couldn't find the article, right? So I tried to Google it. And apparently, this is a real thing. People are being fined hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think he said, like, they told one um, guest that they were going to be fined $3 million, uh Thai bot, which is like $124,000 in U.S. if they didn't take the review down, the, the guest refused. And then they ended up getting arrested. And it's like, first of all, I'm not going to jail out the country. I'm not Go going ahead. To to jail out the country i think i have told y'all that story about the movie i watched where the two girls got arrested trying to sneak some heroin into hong kong they got arrested and had to stay in the thai jail and it was terrible i'm not going to jail out of the country and first of all furthermore why are you leaving reviews at places while you're there right like let's talk about that first of all i don't want nobody to know where, where I, I am when i'm there exactly right Cause like even on social media, if I post where I'm at, trust me, I already yep. left, right? And people are crazy. So if you want to leave a bad review, the first thing you need to do is wait until you leave. But who would have thought going to jail would be the consequence of leaving a negative review? So, so we talk about that a lot, how you need to be culturally aware of where you are and what certain countries are sensitive to. I'm pretty sure that somewhere in the laws, because we know that some of these countries be having all kind of crazy laws, that that's something that could possibly violate their laws. But anyway, I don't want to do anything that even seems like I'm breaking the law. I want to do like the Romans do and do what they're doing and mind my business, enjoy my stay so I can get back home. Because I'm not cut out for the international jail. I'm not. First of all, I'm not cut out for American well, jail. Okay? That's that's just me i really hope that i don't never find myself in a situation i rode in the back of a cop car one time and that was enough for me i was 17 right in in the woods being fast got caught kissing some boy <laughs> by the police and i got escorted and i told them the wrong house because the one thing i know i was not prepared for the whooping my mama was going to give me for coming up to that house with that in that police car let me tell you a funny story about a police car incident that my best friend and I got into when I was in middle school. So, first, let me answer this question. Jennifer, feel free to type to um, tap in. We have Sweet Fifi29. She says, I need to know how to get a good deal on flights. I've been searching for days for my upcoming trip. I'm going to Puerto Rico next week. So, okay. What I would definitely recommend is make sure that you have some type of flight alert on, whether it's Hopper or whether it's Google Flight, so that you're aware of the prices. I typically wait to the last minutes to buy flights too, but I think that when you wait till closer to the date, sometimes you have to be willing to fly a budget airline to get there for a reasonable fare. What do you have? Okay, so, so that I was going to say the same thing, um, but you also may want to consider booking with multiple airlines, right? Mm -hmm. So you may have to book your um outgoing flight through one airline and your incoming flight the other airline also one way if you are if you are down to fly with a budget airline um one thing you can do is if you live close to the airport um today t tomorrow uh go to the airport and check uh frontier spirit or allegiant and book your ticket at the counter because it's going to be significantly cheaper than you actually booking it online correct but if you're paying attention you have to do it before you leave. You don't wait until the day you need to leave to, to do that trick. But Correct. one thing that I do want to address is I keep getting this question about which website has the best flights, right? And in my personal opinion, that is a myth. When you say like, oh, I'm comparing prices with Priceline and this and that, they're giving you the same price as the airline, right? Right. The key to finding flight deals is to chase the deal and not the destination right? right if you have a specific place that you want to go chances are you're not going to be able to find a deal but if you have some flexibility and you know you have a mindset of I know I want to go somewhere but I don't care where I go 
you will you can find some amazing deals i have gone i have shared several times that i went to the netherlands for less than a hundred dollars um when we went to panama last year tickets were like 145 and that was because we had an idea went to boston last summer for 150 and that was because we had an idea we want to go somewhere we just don't have a um we just we just don't care where we're going going to go but right. if you're a person that's saying something like oh which site has the best web best that price i can guarantee you you're not going to find a deal because they're showing you the same thing like i said before they're showing you the same thing as the airline the other thing is booking your plane ticket through a third party website like priceline expedia it is one of the most dangerous things that you can do and the reason why is because they are a third party right so they're the a middleman between you and the airline if something goes down expedia priceline travel zoo kayak they are the unloyal friend they're gonna be like huh, i can't do nothing for you yep. so your best bet is to don't try to find find so-called so -called, i'm trying to have my broken nail y'all huh? the <laughs> um so-called budget websites for for plane tickets like those little travel search websites stay steer clear with them if they, if you're booking a plane ticket right and to add it on that huh i said and that's my spiel <laughs> oh with me being a travel company owner i'm an agent what that means is that i have a lot of clients that come to me like hey can you book a cheaper airline flight things like that like jennifer said the airline price is the airline price and if you, you haven't heard me tell my horror story of booking through a third party let's go ahead and reshare it um I was going to go visit one of my close friends, Zayjan, in Istanbul. That was around the same time that they had the airport bombing. Um, and then a few days later, they had the coup attack. Well, of course, you know, they have the bombing. I call my friend and I'm like, hey, are you okay? Because she actually had just left the airport and had somebody else coming in. Her and the person she had coming into town literally missed the bombing by a couple of hours. And so, you know, I was scheduled to come a week and a half later. So of course, you know, I was talking over with my parents and my friends and I'm like, you know, should I go or should I change my trip to just stay in Frankfurt and not go on to Istanbul? And so I had booked my flight through a third party and I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna see about changing my flight. I get on the phone to call the third party because literally two days before my flight, there was the coup attack. So I'm like, okay, I need to get in contact with somebody because now I need to figure it out. Like you, lightning typically doesn't strike twice but for them to have a bombing and then a coup attack back to back, I'm like, yeah, I probably need to chill. It was a Friday after five o'clock. The damn company was closed through the weekend. So I literally couldn't cancel or do anything because they didn't open up till Monday. And by then I had a choice. This was before I knew the person travel protection. I had a choice, lose $1,500 or make a decision. And I literally, as I was flying and I had a layover in Frankfurt, I had to decide, are you going to go on to Istanbul or are you going to stay in Frankfurt? I went on to Istanbul, but the same time I was in Istanbul, they had a, a um, train stabbing a terroristic attack in Germany. And that's when they had the person that ran over the multiple people in Nice, France around that time too so it's like danger can be anywhere but if i would have purchased directly with the airline i could have rerouted my flight without even having to worry about what circumstances i was going to go into yeah that's a really really good point i've never had an issue i haven't booked with a third party um website in years but let me let me tell y'all a mistake i used to make though is i used to always book with third party sites right because i did i was not at that time i was a atlanta vegas miami girl right so i really was on and i throw in nashville a couple of times a year too this is prior to me having a passport i thought southwest only flew to the southwest right <laughs> so i was like oh they don't fly to vegas because i'm not that's not the southwest that's like the west coast right so that was one little dumb mistake i made but i always thought that like priceline and stuff was like getting a good deal right like i thought like oh yeah this is cheaper than cheaper than the um uh, you know going through the actual airline right and i'm my cousin I, when i realized that i was making a mistake me and my cousin were going to vegas 
and I have bought a $700 flight leaving from Reagan to go to Vegas. That is outrageous. $700, right? That's because I was booking through Priceline, didn't know what I was doing the whole time. I'm like, how much y'all pay for y'all flight? They thought we pay 150 with Southwest. Ex Excuse me, Southwest don't just fly to the Southwest? <laughs> oh. And you have to book directly on Southwest's website because they don't even show up in a lot of third party vendors. Mm, yeah, they don't they, they they don't at all. I was explaining that to someone yep. yesterday, but I think that was the last time I booked a flight through a third party. I was like, oh, girl, you can go directly through the airline and still get, like, you know, um, a good price. But last year was the first time I ever had an issue with booking through a third party. I wanted to go to the – my friend was having a birthday trip to Vegas. We were staying at the Cosmopolitan. I booked the flight – I mean, I booked the hotel through Expedia because I had some points. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get a couple hundred dollars off my – um, you know, a couple hundred dollars off or whatever – and then my friend said she found the cheaper uh, she found the cheaper rate. I'm sorry, I found out that I could save an additional four hundred dollars if I use my AARP card, right? So I was like, let me cancel the Expedia, you know, the the, the hotel room with Expedia. Well, Expedia said to call Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan said they don't see my um see my reservation. Then they said, oh, we do see your reservation, but we can't do anything for you because you booked through a third party. Expedia said they issued my refund. Then, then they say, oh, no, we don't issue your refund. The Cosmopolitan does. We going back and forth. And I'm like, okay, what's, what's up? Because now it's been a month or so, and I still haven't gotten my money. So they're still going back and forth. I just called the credit card company and was like, hey, fraudulent activity. Yep. That's what it was at that point. You couldn't reach nobody. Yep, because I couldn't, I couldn't get, I couldn't get any answers. And at that point, that was the last time that I booked through, um, book through a third party because first of all what i learned with that was one if you go to the hotel directly chances one if you call them they they may match a lot of times they do match Two, the price on the website sometimes is a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and you can actually save more money because if y'all listen to me and y'all get that triple a card or that aarp card you're saving um you're saving additional additional funds so you know Avoid doing the, and I think a lot of people like to do the book now, pay later option. And a lot of hotels don't charge you until you get there anyway. You right. can contact the hotel first to find to find out whether or not that's that's what they do. But if that's something that you're concerned about, a lot of these hotels already don't aren't charging you upfront. Right, or it's a small deposit that's much cheaper than what your room is. And speaking of that, also be careful booking with third parties because I've talked about this before. If you book through a third party like Priceline or Expedia, sometimes hotels have sold over what their capacity is. If you book with a third party, they can do something called walking, which is they'll put you at another property with the same star rate, even if it's not a comparable hotel. If I want to be at the Cosmo, I want to be at the Cosmo. There are not too many hotels in Vegas that can mess with the Cosmo, but you can get moved somewhere else, you know, that you don't want to be because in all of their contracts, when you pay, they have the option. All that they have to do is provide you somewhere to stay. That's comparable if you get there and your room is not available. Mm -hmm. And that happened to me once going from um, Thailand to Bali. And I did not know because they had sent me a confirmation, but they had sent me the information while I was in flight. I did not turn my Wi-Fi on until we got to the hotel, got to the hotel, and they were trying to send us to literally. It was a hotel with the same stars, but it had like two stars in client satisfaction. So I was pissed, and the hotel was like, well, we have two rooms, but because you booked with them and they already changed it, we can't do anything. That was drama at its finest. But while we are talking about drama, I said I had a story to tell, and so let's go ahead and hop into that. So... My, an experience, I had, <laughs> an experience I had with the police, the first experience I ever had with the police was when I was in middle school. And it's crazy because this is, you know how you just come up with stupid ideas? This literally was probably one of the stupidest ideas my best friend and I at the time came up with, but we went ahead and saw it through. So my mama had made spaghetti, right? We didn't want spaghetti. We wanted Taco Bell. So our plan was, when my mama went to bed, we were going to leave the house and walk the Taco Bell. My mama didn't go to bed until about midnight. We were like, cool, you know, we're going to leave the house and walk the Taco Bell. 
what we did not think about in any of our conversation is what happens if the police sees you you know we both look like we're in middle school and we're going to go to taco bell so we're walking i see the police coming i didn't have time to warn my friend or like my voice got stuck i don't know what happened i jump in the bushes the police <laughs> i forgot about this part we had two steak knives each of us had a steak knife because we thought about what we would do if somebody messed with us but we ain't think about what we do if the police come so the police pull up on her she's looking me dead in my eyes in the bushes high behind the apartment side but i'm like in my head i'm like girl i ain't coming now we don't both need to go wherever they about to take you like whatever so she's looking at me she got the steak knife the police is like where are you going she's like taco bell and of course that sounds like a lot, but we really were going to get a Nacho Supreme and three Taco Supremes. And they put her in the car, and they um, brought her back to the apartment. Now, I'm already back at the apartment in my pajamas by the time she gets there. Like, when I see them take her, I take off running, I get home. The, but I did not think, like, what's going to happen when the police show up with her and I got to wake my mama up. It, it was a mess. And that's one of those stories to where, like, when I see her every few years, like, I literally probably see her once every five or six years. I'm always like, well, probably once every decade now. I'm like, you remember that time when the police brought you back to my mama's house? So what happened when she, oh, you skipping stuff. Now, what happened when, when your mama woke up? It was not good. I probably got the ass beaten in my life. It was still because she it probably still hurt. I made spaghetti. So while... It didn't make sense, you know, and as an adult now, I'm like, that had to be one of the stupidest plans that we ever came up with. All this for Nacho Supreme and three Taco Supremes. And that's still my order at Taco Bell to this day. Goodbye. <laughs> More of the story if that didn't turn me off from Taco Bell. So, first of all, Taco Bell slaps, okay? All right, I don't care what nobody said about Taco Bell. I don't care if it's been giving you food poisoning, whatever, all that kind of stuff. Taco Bell would have to call me the N word to my face like Chick Fil A. I just they do no wrong in my eyes. I I completely agree. So, speaking of travel stories, I know that there have been a few stories. I asked in the comments who'd ever been to Dubai, and that's simply because there seems to be more stories coming out of Dubai about travel terrors than anywhere else. But I've been to Dubai numerous times, and I've never experienced those same things. And one thing that Jennifer and I talk about is traveling responsibly, meaning that you're aware of social norms and customs and laws when you go to certain places. Drop in the comments below if you've seen the story about the woman that got into an argument with the rental car dealership and was stuck in Dubai from like July till mid-July, I think, she just got released. Anybody see that story? Did you see that story, Jennifer? Oh, I definitely saw the story. And like my mouth my mouth literally dropped um yeah and and as i've been reading comments about the story of course we know that there are two sides to every story and the truth is somewhere in between but to be honest i've never been to dubai and seen hostile behaviors between people you know there are some cultural differences we know it's a i'm gonna say slightly misogynistic culture there's no way around that but at the same time like i think that what keeps being missed about dubai is that if you're going to dubai you need to be on your best behavior one of the things that i hate is when i see influencers talk about oh well i was able to wear this to dubai and nobody said anything and i was able to do this and i'm like that was your experience but that is not the norm those kind of things when you are in dubai you don't have on certain kind of clothes and that kind of stuff if you're somebody that's aware of things around you, it's extremely uncomfortable because that's not a social norm. Right. And then you always see people saying things like, um, well, people shouldn't go to Dubai and this and that. Why not? All you have to do is go over there and follow the rules like with any like with anywhere else. And I also don't realize too, like I know when um Brittany Griner got in trouble with the marijuana. I don't think that people really realize that some of the places that are most publicized have strict drug penalties. In Bali, you know, everybody wants to go to Bali, which is another place where you have to be culturally respectful. If you are caught with drugs in Bali, you can get the death penalty. In Dubai, 
I read a story a few months ago about a man who had a medical emergency on the airplane, had to be taken to the hospital in Dubai, tested positive for marijuana, which was legal in the state that he was coming from, and he faced criminal charges. And so I think that we do ourselves a disservice by saying we can't go to certain places based on what we see in the media instead of saying let's be well-informed travelers that are aware of the social norms, custom, and laws of these places that we are going. I, I don't know what I was looking at earlier today, and I've said this before. When it comes to certain people who I don't want to travel with, it's people who can't follow directions, right? Exactly. There are some times where you're going to i remember traveling with somebody and you know you cannot um have your phone going through customs right, right. i mean unless you're here and you're using mobile passport but other than that no and i said put your phone away and i knew she was new to traveling i was like put your phone away put your phone away and i'm like i'm trying not to be loud so i'm like put your phone away please so guess what happens we end up getting she ends up getting escorted over to a whole different screening area and it was like you know basically fussing with her like you can be arrested for this and i'm like bruh now one we may miss our transportation because you don't listen i already told you take put your phone away there is a reason why i'm saying it and so even though that's something like extremely minute um you need to be following directions when you're in a foreign place, yeah. right? Because it, it is no joke. If they say that your hair needs to be covered, don't don't test the waters by coming out coming outside without your hair covered. If they say, you know, you can't yell. I know back in the day in um in Virginia Beach, Virginia, they had signs up, no profanity. Like it was illegal to cuss, right? There's a you don't want to find yourself. It's it's one thing to go to jail in the US. It's a totally different thing to go right. to jail with another country, right? Especially if your family ain't got no passports, right? Especially if your family ain't got no money to help you. Yeah. So, so what you gonna do? Because yeah, Brittany, Brittany Griner got home, but you and I don't know Joseph uh, Biden, okay? Joe ain't gonna be checking for neither one of us, right? So it's important for us to make sure that we're, we're on our P's and Q's when it comes to um, following the rules in these countries. Like, no, but Bottom line, I ain't, I ain't traveling with nobody who don't know how to follow directions and want to be dumb enough to test the waters. And I'm going to tell you this. If we go out of town and you get in the cut up, you know, whatever gets you locked up, I have no problem being like, um, who you want me to call because you about to go to jail. I'm not going with you because I have nothing to do with that. But who you want me to call? Because you might, you know, people always like, well, that's too long for them to have been in jail and the penalty is too stiff. America is more lenient than a lot of countries. And Bali having marijuana can get you the death penalty. We complain about things, and I get it, you know. But I think that when you're well-traveled, you get to see a lot of things, and you also realize that we are – America is messed up. It is what it is. But there are a lot of countries that don't have the same freedoms. And that's it. Like, we think we can say anything, dress however we want to, and go to social media – Social media can't always get you out of jail. Brittany Griner is somebody that got home, like you said, because she had all the press, you know, she had all the things. There are people that are stuck in the Russian jail now where she's come home and said, you know, there are a lot of Americans there. There are people that I want to advocate for and help them get home. Everybody don't have that same kind of look, especially if you know your parents don't have it. Listen, okay. First of all, my mother going to be like, you need to sit over there for a while and mm -hmm. think about what you did. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, look up the movie Broke Down Palace. If that movie don't make you want to mind your P's and Q's when it is when you are in another country, I don't know what else will. I saw that movie for the first time when I was like, might have been 14 or 15. To this day, I still think about that movie when it comes to following instructions in other countries. Of course, now, back then, I never thought that I would have the life that I have now. But now, but now, definitely, because I travel as much as I do, I think about that movie every single time when it comes to uh, when it comes to following instructions. And I would say this, too. In some countries where they are known to be misogynistic, like, I can say, I had a really bad experience in the airport, and Angie probably remembers what airport we were in. We were leaving Arusha. This is our trip to the Serengeti. I had two bad experiences. I had a really bad experience with a um, guy at the Emirates Gate 
in Dubai and they did nothing about it because they took his word over mine, even though I had all the evidence to back it. And Emirates is known for being one of the best airlines, but I can say they truly disappointed me with that experience. But that's a story for another day. But even sometimes following the rules, you're not necessarily exempt from things that can happen to you. And so what you have to do is remain calm and you have to think, my goal is to get home. I'm not about to argue with somebody and it be their word against mine and I don't know who they know and I end up locked up somewhere. I can tell you what happened. So at the airport, I think that we were in Arusha. At the airport in Arusha or whatever, um, that's when I told you that me and my friend Angie had to, we were going to sleep outside at the airport because their airport actually closes. It actually closes. Everybody has to leave. And we had a flight delay that caused our flights to be off track. So we had like a 6 a.m. flight. And it was like one o'clock in the morning and we were like, we can tough it out outside, you know, just sitting outside. There are people out here, a bunch of them, but we didn't think about the mosquitoes. So we ended up leaving the airport, coming back. And the same guy, there was a guy at the entrance who basically was telling us we couldn't enter the airport until two hours before our flight. So we finally entered the airport and I had on a, a white shirt that said, um, my vice president's black or something like that this is before we knew that kamala was useless but anyway or whatever and you know i didn't think anything of it so i'm walking through and this guy is like picking with me like he's like um where are you from you know when i answer and people don't realize this about me but i hate for guys to hit on me sometimes it makes me really uncomfortable especially if you're aggressive about it and i felt like he was being aggressive and so my bag went through. He's like, run her bag through again and stuff. And then, like, he kept finding reasons for him and the security to keep messing with me. And then, like, we finally have everything. And then he's like, what does your shirt say? And I'm like, here we go. I probably shouldn't have worn his shirt. I don't know what their political views are about women. That's something else. Be conscious of the, pol the political things that you wear. Be careful sometimes of the political things that you say and be aware of your surroundings. But... He literally, he had security or somebody, like they were checking my passport extra, taking me through extra things. And I'm like, if they decide for some reason that something is wrong, what am I going to do? And I knew that he was waiting. He was like, this American girl has on this shirt, talking about mm -hmm. her LBP is black. I can probably bait her into saying something. And usually, in America, you could definitely bait me. You don't even have to try hard. Because if you go low, I'm going to do the cry baby. That's it. But... It's one of those things to where, you know, I'm like, we have to sometimes mind our tempers and mind our mouths and mind our attitudes, even if we are right. You know, it's hard for us, like, ooh, you wrong. Who we gonna complain to if we get locked up in jail somewhere else? Listen, okay, because I, you know, when I went to Guadalupe last year, the lady in their version of TSA was nasty to me through my through my passport and me and everything, right? And I wanted to, I mean, I'm like, somebody quickly teach me a cuss word in um in in french real quick right and then i'm like girl first of all your mama don't speak french okay my dad ain't got no passport at all so if i get locked up what i'm gonna do be in jail exactly looking stupid yeah and it's yeah. just not worth it it's not and i even hate saying that you know sometimes you will go places and people won't necessarily give you the treatment that you deserve as a woman as a human being as any of those things but you literally have to decide if it's worth it. And for me, it's not. Like, if I'm going to go to jail out the country, I'm going to run first. I'm going to be here anyway, so I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and catch me and shoot me in my ass, because I'm going to run. <laughs> I beat them fell down. So I'm just going <laughs> to lock me up. Because go if I run, I'm going to fall. So that's why I'm just going to uh, yeah. follow the rules. Because I'm telling you, my clumsy self, the moment you start running, then I'm going to run, then I'm going to fall. Yeah. And then it's over. We're going to the jail. So, we went on a whole um, tangent with that, but I know we said we was going to ask each other some questions. You yes. want to go first? You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So my first question is, Jennifer and I have both talked about on Sips and Trips how travel has benefited our mental health um, in a positive way. What do you think, well, what trip have you taken that you feel like truly was a self-care trip that benefited your mental health in the positive ways? Oh, gosh, that's a good one. I was not prepared. And if it's several, just give us one because 
So I'm going to say that it's it's been several. Um, most recently, it was my trip to St. Martin. Um, I have really gone through a really rough patch. Um, I had some issues with work, um, dealing with some health issues. I mean, you know all the things that's going on with me right now. Um, and... I was going to not go to the same on the St. Martin trip because of the job situation. And then my best friend was like, nope, you're going. I'm going to buy your plane ticket. You're, you're going to go. So I was like, all right, I went. And when I tell you, I came back so refreshed. I mean, I slept as long as I wanted to sleep. I laid out. I, did, I really didn't do anything on that trip other than like, I think we took a day trip to, to Anguilla. But just being surrounded by so many amazing women um, and just being in the water, that was really, really good for my mental health. But um, I would have to say the majority of my trips internationally have been really, really good um, for my mental health, even the ones that have been a little, little more stressful than others. Um, in some way, it still gave me like the reset that I needed. If someone was trapped traveling to St. Martin, what would you tell them to put on their list since the most recent trip that it was so refreshing? Um, I would definitely say do the um, do a day trip to like um, Saba or St. Bart's or Anguilla. Um, those were really, it's like a day trip, like a catamaran trip. Um, but they were, they were really, really nice. And also make sure you go to the Dutch side and go to, um, I think it was Sandy's. Go to Sandy's and get okay. you some food. The food is busting. What kind of food is it? Um, it's traditional. Like, you know, they have like um, like the whole snapper, oxtails, jerk chicken. I'm already there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so the food, the food was bomb. And then also, you're going to hear people say something like called Lolo's. Lolo's is not a place. We had to realize that Lolo's is not a place. Lolo's is like a local place, you know what I'm saying? So you go to Lolo's, it could be like multiple restaurants, if that oh, makes sense. Did you yeah. go to Lolo's? I went to Lolo's, yes. Um, and I got the lobster and it was amazing. If you've never been like Caribbean or somewhere surrounded by water and ate lobster, you don't know what you're missing out on. Like, I'm going to get a lobster. I don't care. Like, the best lobster I think I ever ate was... Well, it wasn't the best, but it was great. Because uh, I've had a lot of good lobsters. When we went to Columbia, to Cartagena, and mm -hmm. then we took a, um, we had a private boat that took us. I forgot the name of the island. I'll drop it in my story when I remember it. And we had fresh lobster on the boat, massages. We were drinking pina coladas and pineapples. Now, they hustled us, let me say that. Because every little thing, they're like, do you want a massage? No. Do you want a massage? No. Next thing you know, they're massaging your, your leg, and you, you up $50. But oh, no. it was still a great I'm ready for your question. Okay, okay. So my question is kind of similar to yours, but it's really what has been the most enriching part of adding travel to your life? So I've said before that I started traveling. Like my first big trip was when I went to um, Europe for 18 days. For those of you that don't know, I used to be a teacher. So in the summertime, I would travel. And so two of my other teacher friends and I, we went from London to Paris, Venice, Florence, Rome, and we ended in Greece. So 18 days of traveling throughout the countryside. Um, and I think that the best part of that trip to me was, for one, after that trip, I got my first uh, write-up with Blobity. And I started to get a lot of inquiries about, you know, helping people plan their travel. That kind of launched my travel writing career. And I had been, like, to the Dominican Republic, like you said. I was Miami, Vegas, Atlanta, and, up, and things like that. Cancun, things like along those lines. But to actually spend 18 days in Europe, like, seeing a lot of historical buildings. We went to Stone. Wait. But actually being able to experience that and then for that to launch my travel writing career and for it to land in me having a travel company. By the way, follow at Travels by Tania if you are not. That is my travel company. We specialize in the Caribbean and domestic travel. And also we specialize in group trips. So it launched that. And that if I wouldn't have taken that 18-day trip through Europe, 
I don't even think that my mindset would have expanded as much as it did for me to even, for it to even lead to where it's led. At that time, I was just a teacher and I was an author. Travel business was never anywhere on the record. That was something that God just decided was going to be a part of my life. Yeah. Yeah, that is, it's, it's interesting because um, if it weren't for my friends moving to Australia, red lips and passports would not even be here, right? I had this. I, I had no interest in this. Okay. And so it's amazing how just making that one small decision just, you know, changed our lives. Same. And, you know, I was like, I really want to go to Europe before my 30th birthday, around my 30th birthday. And it turned into all of this. And even I think about how we met, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like I reached out to Jennifer as an influencer to review a travel, to review my travel journal. And then I invited her on a trip to Punta Cana as one of the influencers on the trip. And from day one, it's just been the easiest friendship ever. When I tell you I have met some of the best people ever traveling and through travel experiences, I have friends literally in most cities and in most countries simply because of one conversation, one interaction that we may have had on an excursion, at a hotel bar, at a restaurant, meeting somebody else. I'll, I'll have friends that are like, hey, my friend is there too. You know, y'all should link and we'll link. And all of a sudden, now it's my, my friend, you know, too. And travel is cool. It's cute to post on Instagram and all that. But the benefits when it comes to your relationships, mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to your mindset, the way that you grow, the different ways that you grow by travel have been the most important to me because I started traveling before Instagram was really a thing. Before it was what it is now. It was back when we were sharing a peanut butter and yeah. jelly sandwiches with a filter on it, you know? Yeah. And you had on a cute outfit, so you were going to show it, but that was it. And so, yeah, yeah. Was, I agree. It's, 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 if I would have known during COVID what TikTok was going to do, I'd be at a million followers right now for traveling. Baby, same. But I, same. I did. When, when during COVID, I was like, TikTok is for kids. I'm not getting on there and this kind of stuff. Not looking. Just looking stupid. Look, look, look at us. Looking like we're pretty though, but we look yeah. dumb. <laughs> I, you know, I agree because you know, unfortunately, due to COVID, you know, Tania was supposed to come. You know, we had this amazing weekend plane, and then somebody got COVID for Christmas. Me. Um, but even one of Tania's friends has come to visit and I, I, if it weren't for Tania inviting me on that trip, I never would have met her, met, um, the other girl too. So you're absolutely right when it comes to, um, building relationships. You ready for my turn? My question. Yep. It's your turn. Okay. So if there was, I know, so if you've been looking at our content, you see that we have been reposting snippets from the first Sips and Trips guest that we had, which was Calculated Opulence. And there were truly some gems that were released during that interview. And so during um, her being on our episode, if you want to watch the full thing, go to our, go to my YouTube channel, Travels by Tania. It's in my bio. But one of the biggest things that she said is that you have to be ready for some of the trips that you take. Every trip is not a beginner trip. You know, some trips you need to have at least some travel experience under your belt before you go. I'll give an example. My last five trips have been delayed or canceled, you know, with the airlines. Both my brother and my sister-in-law's family um, went to, my brother went with my sister-in-law's family to Europe. They got stuck coming back. Their flights were canceled. My little cousin went to um, Spain and her flight got canceled going. And if you are not well traveled, those are difficult things to navigate, especially if you are in a different country and you're not necessarily at a resort. So I want to ask you, which trip have you been on where you felt like it required you to be at least an advanced or an advanced high traveler in order for you to navigate it? Baby, I don't even know why the hell you asked me this daggone question because I feel like it was that daggone trip to Punta Cana, okay? <laughs> I don't know why you asked me. It was that trip to Punta Cana. I feel like she asked me that because she wanted me to tell the story about how I ran down that sidewalk trying to get out of there. And I just be so uh -uh. calm. I just, you know, <laughs> was so calm. And I'm like, what is wrong with her? But see, I didn't know you like I know you now. <laughs> and Tania is just like, whatever. Yeah. But. You know, one of the things that come with travel is like you just have to be flexible. You have to roll with the punches, right? And 
Um, lately, my last couple trips, my flights have been delayed, right? Like um, flight delays, flight cancellations. Um, if you guys follow me, um, when I came back from St. Martin, we got diverted from Reagan Airport to Dulles. And if you live in the DMV, that is a big difference in airports. And I'm talking like 45 minutes to an hour or more, depending on traffic. So I, I don't live too far from Reagan, but I live a good chunk of change away from Dulles. And in getting someone to come out to Dulles to pick you up, that's true love, right? And I was hearing all the people on the, on the, on the plane, oh, my God, what the F? Da, 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 da. And I was just like, mm. I went back to school. Sleep. After they said we're diverting y'all to Dallas, I was like Dallas, and then I was like, well, whatever, and I'll figure it out when you know when I get there. Um, and luckily, it worked out. But that trip to Punta Cana really tested my patience, um, and it taught me a lot of. I learned a lot of lessons from it, but it also taught me just to not freak out about things that aren't um, under your control. After I thought about it, I was like, okay, girl, you're not. A, a, a novice traveler right you 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 got this right i hope i use that word correctly but you 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 got this so i remember that i had travel insurance i remember that i booked the flight with my um credit card i remember so that you know i had a, i had a lot of protection a lot of a lot of options for me but to tell y'all the funny story we were all hanging out at the pool i don't remember what we were getting ready to do but i remember i had rented a little cabana and i was laying on a cabana and my phone buzzed, and I looked over at my phone. It was like, we're sorry, uh, due to hurricane. I think they were tracking it as a tropical storm at that point. And they were like, due to tropical storm Fiona, your flight has been canceled. And I was like, oh! I mean, I grabbed all my stuff, and I mean, I ran. I ran. I don't even know what the heck I was going, but I remember I ran, and I seen Tania, and I was like, they said, Oh, hey, um, Jamal, our, our neighborhood weatherman. Jamal yeah. gave us all the clue on the uh, meteorology <laughs> aspects <laughs> of the, um, I'm going to find the clip. I'm going to find the clip and show it to y'all, okay? <laughs> so I'm running, and Tania's like, where are you going? And I was like, they canceled my flight. I'm going home tonight, right? I'm getting out of here. Because I'm like, I'm not getting stuck in a foreign country. In, in a hurricane slash tropical storm, whatever, right? So in my haste of running to my room, I mean, running to my room, I had already booked the flights and I ran to the room and packed my clothes. I packed my clothes and my toiletries. This is what it reminded me of. Like, it was full on panic. I can't get stuck here. I gotta go home. I, that's exactly what I did. And I remember Tania texted me and was like, it was nice meeting you. Like, I'll see you again. And I was like, okay, girl, whatever. Like, I did plan on seeing her again, but I was like, whatever, girl. I'm focused on getting home. I called my mother. I was like, mom, I got a flight to BWI. Somebody got to meet me at BWI because my car is at Dulles, right? And so I get, I booked my flight. I mean, I left clothes and stuff in the room. Like, I was like, I just need the essentials. I got my passport. I got my money. I'm ready to go. So I leave. I get in. I get a taxi. I'm halfway to the airport, or I think I had just got in the car, and they were like, we're sorry, your flight has been canceled. So at that point, I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, what am I going to do? Went home, went, um, went back in the room, I cried. This is this the part about that resort, though. I ain't even telling them people I was checking out. Housekeeping was already in my room, going through my stuff, stealing it, right? So anyway... I text Tania, I, I'm not going home, I'm back, right? She was like, after you cry a little bit, meet me at the bar, and we're going to discuss your options, right? So it all ended up working out. I just had to calm down. I think I ended up spending, I had to spend additional maybe $200 or so on on my room, and then I had to um end up buying a whole new end up buying a whole new um plane ticket so that i could get out in a couple days but and then that flight ended up getting canceled and then i ended up getting back on with the original airline that i had booked with but it it, it told me two things one thank god for growth because many moons ago i would have been ended up being a dominican citizen because i ain't had no money and two we would have got um, you home for everybody but go ahead I, i'm glad 
sad because I don't know how I would have made it. But then the other thing I was, it, it, made, it reminded me of how important it is for you to have travel insurance. And I always tell people don't book that basic travel insurance they offer you on the, uh, the hey. travel website. You got to call the, the travel agency, the, the, the insurance agency yourself and build your own package. Because one thing that COVID taught me and a bunch of other uh, travelers is the importance of cancel for any reason, of cancel in, for any reason coverage, right? That basic plan they offer you on the airline website is not cancel for any reason coverage. I'm just saying. So that was a long winded answer, but. No, I'm going to say this. Now a lot of companies don't even offer cancel for any reason with a full refund because of COVID. Yeah. But when you're traveling, after I dealt with the situation I dealt with in Turkey where I had to go and I literally had to tough it out. And I'm going to say this. The whole time I was in Turkey, it was dangerous. You know, like they pretty much were saying stay out of touristy areas and things like that because it was going to be a bad situation. And Brenda, my mom, she had a birthday celebration, and I had, we left the resort, and I found us a cute little B&B, &B, you know, with a nice little pool in the local area, and we baked her a um, brownie cake, and we celebrated her. It ended up being a real humbling trip, if nothing else, like, we truly bonded. So, Jennifer could tell y'all, and I figured, I'm from Houston, so, you know, we deal with hurricanes, and so when I was like, okay, we're going to be stuck. First thing I thought of, we had a yacht ride canceled, a yacht ride scheduled for the day that everything shut down. And so I still had all that liquor. I was like, look, I'm going to throw a hurricane party. That's what we do. And so we had so much fun afterwards. And please find that video of Jamal, our hood weatherman, because it was the best. It really, we really took lemons and turned them into lemonade. I feel like I met that turned into family. I mean, that's how we got to sips and trips. I started off with sister trip and I'm like, no, I want a co-host. And Jennifer and I just, and it's simply because I found her on Instagram and I was like, oh, I love her content, reached out to her, and now look at it. Yeah, now, exactly. Hey, look at that. And we're headed to Brazil yep. next month, so. Get to Brazil together next month for our first trip together after Punta Cana. Mm -hmm. So we only have like eight minutes left. Definitely bear with us until the end because we love the feedback, drop comments, um, emojis, whatever you want to, because we are so grateful for even having this opportunity to be able to present something like this to where we talk about our truths when it comes to travel. I'm ready for my question. Okay, so I'm going to give a little, little fun one. Oh, I shit. Give me your so, most embarrassing nice. travel story. Let me think of which one is a P13. The sad <laughs> part is that you said, let me think of which one. It's PG13. Uh, I'm thinking. I don't have too many embarrassing ones, but like my embarrassing stuff be foolishness, and so I'm trying to think like if I'm like the next president or something, what's not gonna come around to hunt me? At I'm, least we know you'll be a fun president. Girl, we also gonna bum up some shit too. I'm just telling you now. But okay, let me think. Um, so I can off. I can actually tell you with that trip to bali where our hotel where we got walked so i'm at the hotel going back and forth with the people i have on a little cute dress it's like a blue and white light blue and white like striped little nautical dress or whatever it's super cute but in the midst of all this going back and forth with the hotel at this point we've been at the hotel for like three or four hours i'm on the phone with expedia and at that time plans were not ten dollars a day my five hundred dollars from the calls i had to make from bali to contact expedia and all those kind of things and so sorry my guys in here but it's a female story um i'm going back and forth with them i look up my cycle has started and i had bled through my dress and oh my gosh back and forth and it was the hotel um manager that was like she was a woman she was like come here she was like um you know you've messed up your dress this and that, and I'm still in the lobby. Like at this point, I'm crying, you know, I'm over emotional. And I'm like, this has to be one of the worst days of my life. We get to this hotel, not the right one. Y'all are trying to walk us to a hotel that's known for prostitution. And oh my God. And I'm like, no, I chose this hotel for a reason. I want to stay here. And 
I was traveling with two guys, two of my close male, um, one of my close male friends and his friend, and that happened. When I tell you I was mortified, mortified might be an understatement. Oh my God. Gosh, now that is not the type of embarrassment that I was thinking, but I could, yeah. Yeah, and it's like I didn't know because I had been on the phone with Expedia for two hours. I'm on the phone with them, the hotel and them are going back and forth, and I got caught off guard. And then didn't even have a room to go to to get myself together at first. I literally had to go to a hotel bathroom and figure out some stuff as I'm traveling with two men. Oh my gosh, that is the worst. Yeah. The apps and my dress was like white with light blue stripes. That was the end of that dress. Yeah. I so that for me was it. I don't really have too many embarrassing things that happen on trips. I have foolishness that happens on trips. And so that's a whole nother story. Okay. Okay. I, you know, I, you know, I really don't. I have one embarrassing thing that has ever tell happened. Us. Everything but else really has been. Tell, tell, tell us. Child, I have already told you this story, but it, it it was the time that me and my friends decided to go to Miami broke because we thought we was going to get paid. By the time we landed, <laughs> only we didn't get paid, and we had to sit outside of our hotel looking stupid like three homeless clowns because we didn't <laughs> get paid. So we sat out there until like almost four in the morning looking stupid and homeless. <laughs> I'm surprised somebody ain't put two quarters in my cup while I was sitting out there. Who who does that? So that was the embarrassing thing for me. Yeah, that definitely. And so, you guys, we only have four minutes left. So we thank you all for joining us for Sips and Trips. You know, we've had some amazing guests on here. If you missed our last guest, you truly missed out because we had so much fun. Next Stop Success. But not only do we talk about our travel experiences, but we also talk about, you know, we also bring on guests that we know will share authentic tales about their travel. One of um, one thing that has frustrated us both are the amount of people that get on social media only sharing the positives about their travel and sending you to places to where you don't know you can't yell at people without going to jail or you don't know you have to leave your weed at home. And so what we try to do is just spread more stories about um travel informative travel and safe travel and making sure that you are abiding by customs and things like that and we always bring our favorite sips as we talk about trips so, crystal light yes thank you all for joining us and we will catch you on the next episode of sips and trips we will see you soon good night you guys good night guys Bye.